My name is Beth and I'm a speech and language therapist working as part of the adult community team in Cornwall. This resource aims to give you a brief introduction to oropharyngeal dysphagia, what oropharyngeal dysphagia is and the associated risks, how to identify oropharyngeal dysphagia and how to implement safe swallow strategies. I will also give you some basic advice around how to manage the swallow needs of those with dementia or at the end of their life. The term dysphagia simply means difficulties with swallowing. Dysphagia can be caused by multiple health conditions. These include stroke, dementia, head and neck cancer, and progressive neurological disorders like Parkinson's disease, motor neuron disease, and multiple sclerosis. Speech and language therapists are involved with the assessment and management of oropharyngeal dysphagia, not esophageal dysphagia. Please refer to the accompanying video, when and when not to refer to speech and language therapy, for further information as to the differences between the two. Dysphagia can lead to increased risk of choking and aspiration. Choking occurs when the airway is blocked, meaning that the person is unable to breathe. A choking episode could require back slaps and abdominal thrusts. Please refer to your employer's specific policy on choking and management of these incidents. Aspiration refers to the entry of food, fluid or saliva into the airway and down to the lungs. Aspiration can, but not always, result in severe chest infections and aspiration pneumonia. Signs and symptoms of oropharyngeal dysphagia include persistent coughing when eating and or drinking, increased breathlessness when eating or drinking, persistent throat clearing when eating or drinking, recurrent chest infections, a bubbly or husky voice during or after eating or drinking, food remaining in the mouth after meals, taking a long time to eat meals, a sensation of food sticking high in the throat, sudden and unexpected weight loss and choking episodes. If you suspect that someone has a swallow difficulty, first of all, it is important to check that they are eating and drinking as safely as possible. These safe swallow strategies should always be implemented before any changes are made to food textures and fluid consistencies. Someone should always be sat upright when eating and drinking, with their head in a level position. They should always be awake and alert when being offered food and fluid. Dentures should be clean and well fitting. It is important to take time over meals. If assisting, pause between mouthfuls. This will allow the person to regulate their breathing and perform an extra clearing swallow if needed. Ensure that the person is taking small sips and small mouthfuls. They need to avoid overfilling their mouth. You should aim to minimise surrounding distractions so that the person can concentrate on eating and drinking. Discourage the person from talking whilst eating. If the person requires assistance, ensure that the person assisting is sitting at the same level or at a slightly lower level. This means that the person being assisted does not have to look up or tip their head back. Use of an open cup for drinking allows the person better control of the fluid in their mouth and discourages them from tipping back their head. Where you can, avoid spouted beakers and straws. Where safe swallow strategies are in place, yet the person continues to present with signs and symptoms of oropharyngeal dysphagia, then a referral to speech and language therapy is indicated. You will find the accompanying video useful, 
when and when not to refer to speech and language therapy. In people with a diagnosis of dementia, we often see the following behaviours. Overchewing of food. Decline of food or fluid. Spitting out food. Removing any lumps in the food. Holding food or fluid in the mouth without triggering a swallow. Overfilling the mouth. Eating or drinking at a fast pace. Becoming distracted or talking whilst eating. Falling asleep when there is still food in the mouth. These behaviours do not warrant a referral to speech and language therapy, as they are expected as part of the natural progression of dementia as cognitive and sensory changes occur. There are some things that you can do to support the individual. Check for poorly fitting dentures or any soreness in the mouth. Support the person to maintain good oral hygiene. Reduce surrounding distractions during meals and try to ensure a calm environment. Use prompts during the meal, but discourage conversation. Prompt the person to slow down. Eating from a teaspoon can help to limit quantities taken. Encourage independence. This might be achieved by providing finger foods or giving hand over hand guidance. If no swallow is initiated, try offering an empty teaspoon or the rim of a cup. If a swallow can't be initiated, stop oral intake, remove any residue and try again later. Only offer food and fluid when someone is fully alert. If they are too sleepy, wait. Offer again once they have rested. If someone falls asleep with food in the mouth, ensure they remain in an upright position and try to rouse them. If necessary, help them to clear the food from their mouth. You can do this by using a spoon or a toothbrush. Consider offering little and often rather than three main meals. Pay close attention to body language and facial expression. The person may have difficulty communicating that they're hungry, that they don't like the food, or that it's too hot. Flavour preferences change with age and also with dementia, so the person may respond better to stronger or sweeter tastes. As a person reaches the end of their life, we expect eating, drinking and swallowing to change. The needs of the body are reduced including the need for food and drink. The priority becomes comfort rather than maintenance of nutrition and hydration. If someone's intake is gradually reducing, remember that a speech and language therapy referral is not indicated. If someone is displaying difficulties with their swallow, a speech and language therapy assessment can help to determine the easiest, most comfortable textures and consistencies. Sometimes, despite strategies and modifications, the risk of aspiration cannot be eliminated and the person will be eating and drinking with accepted risk of aspiration. This may be the case where comfort is the priority and or the person's wishes are more important than the potential for aspiration. If someone is not initiating a swallow, Use the same strategies that you would on the previous slide and remember that the priority is to keep someone comfortable. This might mean that they have very little to eat or drink and eventually nothing at all. Mouth care is vital. Poor oral hygiene can be very uncomfortable, sore and increase pain when eating and drinking. If someone has poor oral intake or is not eating or drinking at all, very regular mouth care remains crucial and may need to be performed hourly. The oral health toolkit for adults in care homes can be very helpful. Details of how to access this can be found on the next slide. Artificial nutrition and hydration or tube feeding can help to maintain nutrition and hydration, but is not always deemed to be appropriate, particularly for those with a diagnosis of dementia. 
there is always a risk associated with surgery and an ongoing risk of aspiration. Tube feeding does not prolong life. The family of the person may need support to understand and come to terms with the changes seen in eating and drinking. Dementia UK and Marie Curie publish useful information on this. You might find their publications useful in discussions with family. These organisations and websites all provide very valuable information around eating and drinking in dementia, eating and drinking at the end of life and how to perform effective mouth care. If you have any queries or would like to request a referral form, please contact us via telephone or email. Don't forget, please view this video in conjunction with the accompanying video, when and when not to refer to speech and language therapy.